This screencast is 2.2.12. Compare the distribution of blood at rest and the redistribution of blood during exercise. So here we're looking at the movement of blood away from a number of our internal organs towards skeletal muscle so that we can increase oxygen delivery uh, for the primary purpose of energy production. So you can pause that and read it. Um, the important things here to recognize are a couple of definitions. Vasodilation, the widening of the blood vessels causing an increase in blood flow. So blood flows more easily with or through a larger environment. Vasoconstriction, the narrowing of the blood vessels causing a decrease in blood flow. So essentially if we're wanting to increase blood flow to working muscles then we end up with vasodilation occurring in the direction towards skeletal muscle and we have vasoconstriction occurring in the direction of internal organs. Now these are, well, this occurs as a result of um, hormones uh, being released which uh, primarily cause that um, and looking at it a little bit later these tend to be the adrenal um, hormones so looking at it in a couple of different ways this first bar graph over here or A is looking at the percent of cardiac output to key areas. So as we can see during an increase in exercise intensity for example the brain receives a lesser percentage of cardiac output. However because cardiac output itself increases dramatically during exercise, it's not going to receive a lesser volume. So graph B looks at cardiac output, so volume of blood going to particular areas. So again here, in fact, we'll notice that the brain during exercise receives a greater volume of blood, but a lower percentage. Our muscles, as we would expect, are receiving during exercise a greater and greater percentage of cardiac output, which results in a massive increase in actual volume being delivered. Again, primarily, we want to see two skeletal muscle an increase in percentage of cardiac output or in our litres I mean, so our volume of cardiac output so that we can increase oxygen delivery. Now this is a very similar diagram to what's in our textbook just presented in a slightly different fashion so instead of the um, column graph above we now have it as a pie chart. So here we can see that at rest muscles receive about 20% of the volume of blood or of our cardiac output which is around about 1000 milk, remembering that 
that rest cardiac output's approximately 5,000 or 5 litres. However, during exercise, this has increased to about 84%, so about 21,000 mils or 21 litres of the 25 litres being pumped around our body per minute. Now, as we were mentioning before, during rest, the brain receives 14%. Here, the brain only receives 4%. However, when we look at the volume, before or at rest, it receives 700 mil per minute. Here, at strenuous exercise, it's actually receiving more, so 900 mil per minute. So I'll go back here. You can pause that and have a read of it if you would like. It does relate um, a little bit to our blood pressure looking at um, static activities or where Valsalva maneuvers occur. So here's a, a nice little diagram that looks at the redistribution of blood flow. So during rest, our towards maximal exercise, here we have a decrease in oxygen delivery to our other organs, whereas our delivery towards skeletal muscle shows the um, inverse, so quite a dramatic increase. This article um, again you can pause and read but it's talking about the secretion of adrenal hormones so looking impulses from the hypothalamus stimulate the sympathetic so again looking at increasing heart rate but we're also here looking at uh, redirecting blood away from skin and digestive organs to the skeletal muscle, coronary arteries, liver and brain.